I'm on right. Okay, so we're ready for roll call. And the question tonight is, what was your favorite present you got as a kid for Christmas? And I'll start off and say it was my Davy Crockett coonskin cap that I got in the midst of the Davy Crockett mania back in the 50s. <laughs> so, okay, uh, Bruce. I got a toboggan. We had lots of snow and I had a toboggan. Rob? I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, I don't remember, but I wish I had some of those uh, memories back or... or uh, time with a good parent. As you get older, you kind of appreciate those things. So, no personal items that I can remember. Rachel? Uh, my first Barbie doll. Gerald? When I was 11 years old, my dad got us each a Daisy BB gun and set up a range in our basement with about a 30 foot area to shoot through. That was that was fun. Uh, original Nintendo. The family present. Gerald? Uh, it. We let Janelle come on. What? Oh, wait. Well, I wasn't prepared, but it was my cabbage patch doll. <laughs> okay, everyone is here. Uh, are there additions to the agenda? Uh, no. Approval of the agenda. Thank you, motion. Carol made a motion. Ron seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, okay, public comments. No. Consent agenda, you know. Um, I'll let Cheryl start with bills. I was able to go in and peruse the bills, and nothing jumped out at me. Everything was business as normal. Um, the personnel are, are just a couple of minor changes. Um, you will see uh, Colin Wolf came back on board as our um, our head track coach, so we're we're happy to welcome him back. Um, and then donations, I will just call out. For December, we had a $200 cash donation to the nurse's office. So um, that's the donation acknowledgement. Otherwise, pretty um, pretty low-key consent agenda today. Just a question on Colin. Mm -hmm. Is he coming back as the head coach? We've had co-coaches. Yep, they were, they, he is the sole head coach. He will be the sole yep. head coach. Okay, yep. I'm just curious about that. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So move, Bruce. Second. Yes. Okay. Rachel seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It passes. Communication items from the administration. Yep. Um, I have very little. It's only been two weeks since our last meeting. Um, so you'll notice the revenues and expenditures are not updated, but we'll go through those in January um, just because of the short time period. Um, and then I just really wanted to give you an update on um, some of the work that I've been tracking with all of our organizations. Um, with the legislative platform. I know a couple of meetings ago, we had an opportunity to visit with Representative Demeth, and um, I think it's important to continue our work at the legislature and having conversations. So in the future, one of the things that I will be sharing out are, are the various platforms and kind of the common themes. Uh, today, I had an opportunity to be part of the um, MASA Legislative Committee um, to start working on kind of what is the right, um, the right ask in the right timing. So we're, we're having conversations around um, the areas to advocate for. So more information will be coming to you about that, but otherwise I really, there's it's been a quick two weeks since our last meeting. I don't have any student reps tonight. So any committee reports, organizational reports? We had the MRDA mm -hmm. last week, which was primarily made up of, of both of the meeting was uh, just getting to know people that are running for elected seats within the MREA um, and kind of had some budget updates and then, then discussed through some of the um, future plans and asks that, that they're going to look for through legislation. So, uh, For the West Central uh, Ed District, uh, setting up meetings for next year as far as that calendar. Uh, I have been asked if I would stay on. I have accepted that, but I just want the rest of the board members to know when we go into January and we do start looking at committees, I would appreciate that uh, if uh, if I could stay on that. And that's that's something that I would support too. I think one of the things when we have new board members learning what the Ed District is, um, it does take a few cycles to, to know kind of their functioning and how that works, but um, obviously the board can choose represent whomever but um I, I that's a reasonable request in my mind so. okay. the reports 
Okay, no old business, so let's go to new business, audit report. All right, um, so I we have um, Ryan Schmidt with um, mm, Schneider, Wenner. Nice. That was close, Schlenner, Wenner. <laughs> Do you see me sitting here like squinting my eyes trying to read that? <laughs> I you don't, just, you don't just know that off the top of your head? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of things I remember, but that was, I'm sorry. No, that's <laughs> um, so welcome. Uh, thank you for being here to present our, our audit information. I am going to do a little bit of volume control here. Um, okay. All right, let's see. If, all right, you want to give me a sound check? All right, how, how's that? Okay, I think that works. Uh, let me pull up your. Um, so I'm going to pull up the PowerPoint that you sent and share that. Oh, you've oh, got yeah. it. I, yes, I, I, I like to share my screen and take control if that's okay. That is 100% okay. Um, and we do have all the documents linked. So we have that presentation along with the financial statements and the report for the board. So just so that you know, um, that has been shared and presented uh, to the board and the community. Perfect. Sounds good. Good deal. All right, well, um, as in the past, I've got a PowerPoint presentation here to run through. Um, it's, I find it's usually a little more palatable, a little more preferable versus uh, going through the large, you know, 70, 80 page report. Um, so we're just going to hit the high points here. But if anybody has any questions as, as I'm going through, definitely feel free to stop me and, and we can talk about it. So, as in the past, uh, I'm going to start out with a little reminder here and what exactly is the audit process, what is the purpose of an audit. Um, an audit essentially consists of us obtaining your financial records from throughout the past year, and we perform a number of procedures over this information. Um, so these procedures consist of various inquiries about the numbers with uh, people inside the school, uh, with the management of the school, various analytics where we develop expectations for what your revenues and expenses and year-end balances might be based on industry trends or based on uh, prior year's experience or the budget. And then lots of detailed testing and sampling procedures, looking at invoices and bank statements and uh, you know reports from the state and from MDE, um, all for the purpose of verifying the individual transactions that are in your accounting system that come together and make up the numbers in the financial statements. So based on the results of these procedures, we're able to then express an opinion on whether or not we feel that your financial statements are accurate. And the opinion that we've given you this year is what's called an unmodified opinion. So that is a clean opinion and that's, that's what you're hoping to receive. So from a high level, that's the overall result of the audit. You did get that clean opinion. Um, we've got a few other things here that we always need to communicate to you if you required communications. Um, this is where we would let you know if there were any problems during the audit as far as uh, difficulties getting the information we needed or if we saw anything unusual in terms of accounting transactions or, or policies that we thought were a little strange. As you can see, nothing like that noted here. Everything looked pretty standard, pretty routine from what we could see. As part of the audit, we also look at your internal controls, so your policies and your procedures that you have in place related to the accounting process. And then we have some internal control related uh, findings that we often need to give. Now, a very common one with many of the districts we work with is a finding for audit adjustments, which is saying that during the audit, if we come across an error or something that needs to be fixed, we post journal entries, we make those corrections, and we help get those financials to the, to the point where we can give that clean opinion. Now, with your district, we actually didn't have any audit adjustments. So that tells me, or that, that should tell you, that the numbers that you're seeing on a monthly basis are likely very accurate, because um, we didn't need to make any corrections during the audit process. Now, we do have two internal control-related matters here that we do report every year. And these are kind of like the standard two for a district your size. Uh, the first one of these relates to segregation of duties. And this is simply because of the size of your district. There's overlap with certain accounting processes where certain people at the district have pretty much full access to your accounting system. Um, and whenever that's the case, then we have to make that note in the financials, make sure you're aware of it so that you're implementing oversight wherever possible. 
And then also we do prepare the financial statements on behalf of the district. Um, and whenever anybody outside of the district is preparing those financials and there's not like an internal CPA or somebody performing a review, we have to make a note of that as well. Next page, uh, we also look at your compliance with various Minnesota statutes during the audit. Um, the state actually gives us checklists for each one of these categories to look at how do you go about contracting and bidding? You know, where do you keep your, your cash? What kind of investments or, or deposits do you have? Um, so on and so forth. Um, we did have one finding this year, uh, which relates to the depository insurance that you had at the credit union. Um, so with the credit union, you don't you don't have FDIC, but you have something that's very similar to FDIC covering your, your cash accounts there. And then they have a supplemental insurance as well uh, for your other balances that are above uh, the, the threshold for, for the initial insurance, I guess. Anyway, long story short, there was a little bit of a miscommunication and it turns out that not all of the cash balances were fully insured. So if the, if the bank were to go under, if the credit union were to close, then you could have some exposure there, um, which is a violation of Minnesota statutes. Um, it, it wasn't, I don't believe it was a huge amount that was exposed and I wouldn't consider this to be a, a very significant finding, um, but it's something that should be addressed uh, just to get in compliance with the statutes and make sure that you're, you're covered going forward. As part of the audit, we also perform what's called a single audit um, and this relates to the federal funding that you receive. So whenever you expend more than $750,000 of federal dollars during the year, we need to do this extra single audit. And basically we select a few of those federal programs or at least one of those federal programs. And we look at the terms of that program. What are the compliance requirements? What can you spend that money on? What kind of reporting do you need to do? And then we uh, basically make sure you complied with all of those provisions. As you can see, we gave you a clean opinion on compliance uh, and no internal control related matters uh, that we noted there. And this this is the, the ESSER dollars was our focus this year the, under the Education Stabilization Fund. All right, with that, we'll move into the numbers a little bit. Um, first, first slide I'd like to take a look at here is uh, your enrollment over the past five years. Um, you can see it. Pretty steady in recent years, just a little bit of a, a decline here from FY22 to FY23, down about 14 students, uh, ended the year at about, at about 893 students for FY23. Next page, we'll look at the general fund, um, starting out just really big picture. Once again, a five-year trend, uh, 2019 through 2023 with revenues and expenditures, and then your fund balance at the end of each year. Um, so big picture comparison to the budget, revenues did come in over budget by about $203,000. Expenditures were under budget by about $305,000. So on a net basis, you had budgeted for a decrease in your fund balance of around $93,000, but you actually had an increase in your fund balance for the year of, of around $416,000. Now the next couple pages break those revenues and expenditures down, still, still looking at the general fund, breaking down those same revenues and expenditures into some smaller categories here, uh, looking at 2022 in the blue, 2023 actual in the red, and then the budget in the green. You can see that the vast majority of your revenues come from state sources. Um, this is driven largely by enrollment. Um, so fluctuations in enrollment can cause uh, a decrease here in your funding. There's other factors at play though too. Um, but you can see overall very close to budget in each category, um, pretty consistent with the prior year as well. <laughs> Same layout here on the next page for expenditures. Um, biggest areas of expenditures are for regular instruction and uh, special education. And you can see that that's consistent with the prior year. Overall, not a whole lot of deviation from your budget. Um, th those two larger categories were the areas where you had the, the larger um, deviation. Where you came in under budget, but um, nothing in particular stood out as far as unexplained budgetary differences. Okay. 
Next page, still looking at the general fund. Uh, this kind of analyzes your fund balance at the end of the year. So this is the fund balance at the end of each individual year, and then breaking that fund balance down into its different classifications. So a portion of your fund balance is restricted for, for specific purposes. A portion is committed, meaning it's been formally set aside or, or assigned for specific items. And then, a, and then the largest portion is unassigned, meaning you can spend it for day-to-day -day, uh, needs, whatever, whatever that need may be. Um, so biggest changes from last year, unassigned fund balance did increase $185,000 and your restricted balance has also increased about $253,000. Um, a lot of this restriction is for long-term facilities maintenance aid, about $770,000. And then that fund balance in aggregate, uh, looking at the unassigned portion here as a percentage of your annual budget, you do have a policy in place for this ratio to be approximately 12.5% uh, as a minimum is how I interpret that. Um, and you can see that you did have an increase in this ratio this year up to about 13.6%. So you are in excess of your policy here. Okay, move away from the general fund. We'll take a quick look at each of the other funds the district has. Um, debt service fund activity here is very typical of what you'd expect. Revenues from state aids and taxes, uh, debt service expenses, Generally, this is how it turns out. You, you either have a slight increase or a slight decrease. Uh, this year it was an increase of about $11,000 for the year. Building construction, uh, not much activity here, just spending down some of the remaining dollars in that fund. Uh, decrease in this fund balance of about $31,000. Next page just shows the cash in both of those two funds over the past five years. Um, kind of reflects what I just talked about on the previous page decrease in the building construction, debt service holding pretty steady. Last two remaining funds, we have your food service fund and community service. Uh, food service, the activity here was, was pretty different from FY22 to FY23. Um, FY22, you had pretty significant federal funding still for, for meals. Um, that dropped off in FY23. Uh, so those federal revenues dropped almost $500,000, but that was offset by the fact that you were charging for meals again. So that, that added an extra $220,000. Um, but as a result, a little bit more flat on your activity on a net basis this year. Um, so a decrease here of about $8,100 compared or from, from the prior year. Community service activity here, uh, a little bit more revenues and expenses, but on a net basis, pretty comparable to last year as well. Um, increase here of about $117,000 for the year. And you can see the cash trend in both of these funds over the past five years. Community service has been on an upward trend in recent years. And food service uh, was on an upward trend with that extra federal funding that was coming through. Uh, this year, a little more flat. Okay, so that does it for each one of the individual funds. Uh, just a couple quick slides here to look at things in aggregate. So this is now wrapping all of your funds together and putting it on the full accrual basis of accounting where, where we include all your non-current items like capital assets and, and the next page, long-term liabilities, looking at everything big picture for the whole district. Um, you can see here a slight decrease in assets uh, both your, your current assets being cash and receivables and more short-term items, um, then also a reduction in your capital assets as well, just with the depreciation of your existing assets. But you also had a corresponding decrease in liabilities. Now, I, I say that if you ignore the green here for a minute, pretend the green isn't there, uh, just looking at your current liabilities and your debt, uh, much less... Uh, short-term liabilities as far as amounts due to vendors or contractors at the end of the year, and then also a reduction in your debt as well, just due to the payments that you made during the year. Um, so ignoring that pension liability, um, a, a sizable decrease in your debt here from FY22 to FY23. 
Now, as a reminder, this net pension liability, the reason I say ignore it is that this is your proportionate share of the statewide pension plan liabilities. So TRA and PERA, they project their future liabilities. They have an actuarial study each year and, and they have these large liabilities that they calculate and then they break off a small piece and they allocate it out to each district throughout the state of Minnesota and they have you put it on your books as a liability. Um, it's not something that you could pay off even if you, you wanted to. You're just going to keep <laughs> your normal contributions through payroll like always. Um, so you don't have much control over that green bar. And that's why on the next page here, I like to take a look at uh, your assets versus your liabilities, excluding those pension balances, and just see what has happened on a net basis over the past several years. You can see from FY22 to FY23, you did have a bit of a bump on a net basis, looking at your assets versus your liabilities. Last slide, just looking at your debt over the past five years. Um, as you can see, it's a bit of a decrease here with the payments that you made this past year. Um, three bonds, bond issuances still outstanding at the end of the year. Any questions? I have one. What's OPEV mean? OPEB. Okay, that, that would be other post-employment benefits. So each year you have an actuarial study completed uh, that projects your future liabilities for post-employment benefits. So basically health insurance uh, for retirees from the district. So it, it, it's kind of it's kind of like the pension thing to a certain extent, except it, it is very specific to your district. Um, but it, it's a it's a projection of liabilities. I saw it on a, the statement and it appears to be printed differently than all the rest of the numbers. So it must be a number that wasn't counted. So that makes sense. Yeah. It's not, it was stated on the statement, but it's not counted. <clears throat> yep. Yep. Yeah. Any questions? <laughs> Right. All right. If there aren't any questions, um, I would be looking for a motion to approve the audit report. I'll make a motion. Second. Bruce. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Yep, you too. All right. Let's make sure when he logs off that we don't lose anybody. We're still recording. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Okay. Do we have to go through those financial statements? Um, we do all? not. Those are no. Nope. That's just reports. Those are the reports that. The, okay. The resources that were listed that were just approved are all of the okay. the data that was summarized in his presentation. Okay. So we move on to B. Yep. So um, one of the things that the board does do at the end of the the audit is to approve the final. 22-23 budget uh, with the fund balance. So this is going to be the document that we've seen over the course of years, but it is reflective of the audit, the, the finalized audit. So um, this would be the board approving the 22-23 fund balance um, uh, after the audit. I make a motion to approve the 2022-23 final budget. Second. Um, Gerald second. Any questions? On Thursday, aye. 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 Post, it passes. Here. Handbook. All right. Uh, so when we started the school year, I think I, I gave you as a board a heads up that there were a lot of changes that had come through the legislature, and there were also just a number of changes. Um, that MSBA, um, when we reviewed their recommended handbook and, and how that kind of feeds into our procedures and processes through the school year, um, that, that we might have a revisit of the handbook. And indeed, that is where we are today. Um, the secondary administration really has um, 
had just um, a number of issues that have um, arisen in really our middle school population with the use of cell phones. So that really prompted uh, just a, a deep analysis of what's happening around us and what, what is kind of the procedures and practices for other middle school students. So what you're going to see is um, a recommended change to the handbook um, that does um, prohibit the use of cell phones for our middle school students from the time the bell rings to the time the bell rings. Um, and I am gonna pull that up so you can see that change identified. Um, extensive conversation has taken place with the staff as well, so that um, Mr. Orline had an opportunity to hear from them firsthand. Is this problematic? What are the issues and concerns? Um, and, and there is support from the, the staff as well to, um, to make this uh, recommended change. So what you're gonna see is highlighted and it's a change for grades six through eight um, that cell phones, cell phones, AirPods, earbuds, and any other non-school issued communication devices will not be allowed from 8.20 to 3.10. Um, so uh, simply they, they need to, um, that they need to stay in their lockers, they cannot be on. Um, and really, even during passing time and lunches, you know, one of the things that we found is um, with the previous, um, the previous procedures, there was the non-instructional, um, but this is a recommendation to um, eliminate cell phone use throughout the middle school. Anybody had a chance to read this? Yeah, I guess the question I have there, you got third offense. So it means the parent can't pick up that phone for a week is what you're saying? Uh, no, it means that that student would turn that device into the office for a week. If they come, if it comes to school with them, they have to turn it into the so week. The every parent can pick it up. The parent will pick it, it up. Home, but, but, but the parent doesn't have to wait a week. No. no. Okay. no. So the device would be turned into the office if every day and picked up at the end of the day. Correct. For a week, just to ensure there's no contact with the device. Correct. Yep. I'll make the motion to approve the revisions to secondary student handbook. Thomas makes a motion to approve. I'll second it. Cheryl makes a second. No questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It passes. Polling places. All right. So every December, uh, the school districts, especially at a time where you may be considering going out for a um, uh, a vote that is run outside of your general election, um, school districts need to identify a combined polling place. So what you'll see here is the identification of a combined polling place. Um, our historical combined polling place has been the Painesville Area Center. Um, so uh, what the board would need to do is to make a resolution setting the, um, the Painesville Area Center as our combined polling places for um, a specific election that is run by the school district. I'm making a motion for the uh, for this uh, resolution. Yep, I'll second. Okay, I'll take a roll call vote. Bruce. Aye. Ron. Aye. Rick. Aye. Rachel. Aye. Cheryl. Aye. Thomas. Aye. Gerald. Aye. Passes. On to the first meeting in January. So we talked a little bit about this at our last board meeting, um, but this is just really formalizing that um, when our first meeting in January would be held for the organizational structure of the board. Uh, so what we had talked about um, is holding the meeting on Tuesday, January 9th with the work session to be held immediately following the organizational meeting. So what this, what this action does is that just formalizes what the board had discussed um, at our last board meeting. Is there a motion to approve? Make a motion. Gerald made a motion. Rob seconded. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It passes. Policy review, first reading. Okay. So what you're seeing here is the policy that corresponds with the finding in the audit. Um, so what happened is um, this, and, and actually I received confirmation that, that this has already been taken taken care of at Magnify. So we are we are good to go with the um, the fact that the board is reading this policy. So the policy committee, um, they reviewed this policy and really what it does is it, it gives the guidance to 
um, our financial entity to protect the, the assets that we have um, to the fullest capacity, which was the citation that we had in the audit. So um, this makes brings us up into compliance um, based on the- So basically all of our stuff is insured. 100%. Yep. And this is just the first reading, so it's we'll- The first reading, yep. Approve it the next. And this will sit in the, um, be available in the district office for 20 days, just like the other ones. Um, so then because of the time lapse, we will be able to pull everything together. So our policy second read will be this policy in addition to the ones that we reviewed at the end of, uh, sorry, the end of November. Okay. Um, oh my goodness. School perceptions. I just realized I did not link that in. I've gone back and forth. Hang on, give me one second. Um, I've gone back and forth with the um, uh, the school perceptions people to make sure that our um, document is 100% up to date. So just give me one second. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. There we go. Version five. So, to I'm sorry, I have this on my, I apologize. Um. <clears throat> All right, so let me share this with the, um, with the group as well. So um, really the intent here today is, is just to kind of give the board a heads up on the work that has been done to um, understand and, and get a preliminary feeling about um, how our community feels in regard to the tech levy. So what you're going to see is that um, there's just a summary of the, um, how that tech levy has been used in the past. So just a reminder of those, um, of those bullet items. Um, and then letting them know why, again, we're asking, um, Without that funding, uh, we would have, if we were going to maintain the, the computers, the technology um, infrastructure, the software, those monies have to come from the general fund. So, or there have to be, you know, reductions. So it's just a reminder that, that why we need that funding. There's the, how they can take the survey. This is very typical to what our previous surveys um, have shown and, and the format of um, the previous two that the district has sent. This purely has the board data in addition to um, myself identified. Why I think it's important for you all to um, see this and have it, 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 just have a visual of what it looks like is so that if you get questions about it, you're able to kind of respond. Um, two things with this, majority of our um, individuals have done this um, digitally, um, but they don't have to. This can be completed and mailed back. And I think that's one of the really key components that's been really important for um, many of our constituents. So um, if they do it digitally, they'll either, they can either scan the QR code and there will be a code printed right here that is specific. Um, and there's one for family. And then what happens if there's a couple, for example, um, one one individual can use the one code and then the other individual can contact the district office and they get a secondary code. So there is no limit to who can complete the survey, okay? Um, you'll see that our target com completion date is by February 5th. Um, so I think why that's uh, gonna be beneficial is because when this 
that information is presented back to the board. Um, at that point in time, the board can make a determination if you want to go for a special election in May or in August, based on kind of the information that we have, we'll know how much education needs to take place. Okay. Um, so very typically, again, um, to what we've done in the past, helping to use the survey to communicate um, informational items. So just reminders about what bonds are, what an operating referendum in, what, what operating referendum is, and then also the capital project levy, the tech levy. And that's really what we're going and asking for is that tech levy, okay? Um, letting them know what it would be used for. Here's really where, again, you're gonna see the same four items that are identified above, but it adds the addition of the public address, the PA system that we really have talked about as a priority um, within our, um, from a safety perspective and communications uh, perspective across the district. And here's the first, just the simplest question. Um, we went, had a lot of conversation about um, the language to use, and I think that um, the recommendation of the survey committee is, or the survey company, is just to keep it as simple as possible. Would you support renewing the capital project tech levy at the current rate for each of the next 10 years? I think that's a really important piece of information for the community to hear, is that there's not an, an ask for additional, additional percentage or additional um, um, the, the rate, the tax rate is not going to change. Um, it would be a peer renewal. Um, last, uh, one of the previous meetings when we had talked about this, um, I think Thomas had maybe asked about having to make a statement that it'll increase your taxes. Um, so we don't have to make a statement that says it'll increase the taxes, but you do have to make a statement saying that um, this will be renewal and expiring levy. So there will be a statement, it's just, it's, it, not it's just not that one, okay? It does allow a place for comments and suggestions. So where's that statement going? It's on the ballot. On the yeah. ballot. It's not this in here. How come it's not something like that isn't here? Because it's- um, Are it's, we real clear to everybody? This is people that are not computer literate, they don't know anything about what's going on. It looks like it's a 383,000 deal. They're gonna pick out the numbers as they read it. Is it very clear to them that it exists today and it moves on? Yes. Well, you, know, yeah. you can read it in yeah. certain parts, but the population is all different people. We all get it. We all know what's going on. Is everybody going to get it? I believe that's very that, clear. Yep. I believe that the language that the survey um the survey developers took brought to this is clear. We went back and forth to to understand is it too much? Is it not enough? And so this is the recommendation of the survey company primarily to address that Bruce so that it is it's clear it's just a renewal um but it is not going too far and too deep into the weeds but what i like is it says it in bold there twice renewing this levy would maintain the current tax rate yep, and then it also says if would you support renewing the capital levy at the current rate for the next 10 years i mean it's just that rule of renew current tax rate it just kind of Capital project levy, the project technology levy provides three hundred and eighty-three thousand per year. People are going to see three hundred and eighty-three thousand dollars and assume that's what the levy is. They're going to get down to the question till they actually see it. I'm just saying when people show up to the polls, they're not people who are sitting here. It's yeah. everybody in the district. It has to be very clear to them that this exists today. Yeah. And I think um, I think that might be something that we learn as a, if the if if the community doesn't seem to understand that Bruce through this survey, then we know what our level of communication needs to be. For it needs community. to be here because this is getting to everybody. All these meetings we have, thirty people show up, um, twenty people show up. This is getting to everybody. This has to be very clear to people that this is an existing levy so and all we're doing sentence, is renewing it in that sentence do we say the current bolded current capital project levy provides so i what you know i'm going to do is i'll bring you're on the base, something, 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 something that's very clear to everybody i was i was had to went in last time we had one of these and and i voted and i just looked at everybody there i saw everybody people that were i would assume were probably pretty computer literate 
uh, watching, but everybody else is there. They are there based upon whatever we tell them here. Or we have to understand that this is existing. Or we remove the 383 per year because in that, we're just describing what a bond referendum is, what an operator referendum is, and what a capital levy is. And none of the other ones don't even say how much we're receiving. This is just a description of what that levy is. So can we just take out? Because I believe they're going to read along and see that number, and their decision is going to be made before they go anywhere else. Not so, understanding totally that it's there today. So the and we had conversation about that, but that dollar amount will be identified on the ballot, as will the tax rate or the the tax percentage. So, um, so that that number is going to be there. No, and I I don't think we hide the number from the public. I'm just saying, to Bruce's point, is it better placed somewhere else than? the first thing that they're reading and shut their brains on before they answer any of their questions you know and again i guess funding sources we're describing what funding sources are but none of the other funding sources tell are describing how much we, we, we received or yeah. are receiving for yeah. our funding sources and then is that created to be better place somewhere else our yeah. monitor was just here in the class of his stuff was based upon 2017 18 19 so, you know what I mean? had, yep. so where is there his maybe we show them what the history is this started here this was passed here and this is what it is we're just wanting to continue it so but, i'll bring that back because bruce uh, we had that information in there to begin with um mm -hmm. that the bond referendum in 2019 it was the pack the operating referendum in 2022 so we had all that information in there we want to stay um, with this the information we want in this survey is this one. So if I, I'm just going to go right back to our auditor. How many charts did we see with a whole bunch of years on it? All over the place, right? I'm not sure the public is not interested in that too. And how difficult would it be if our issue here is about this levy? This is what it looked like in 2000, whenever we started. And this is what it's been for that period of time. This is where we are and that we want to continue it it becomes very obvious yeah i, no, I hear what you're saying um and i i think what's what's the the rate is what's consistent and it's always been when you put that uh, um when you put the first the rate the tax rate in there which is because that's really what is consistently the same but the revenue that's generated from that tax rate is what's variable right that, that's the 383,000 so that would be more interesting can we put in there in 2015 it was this number 280,000 then in 2016 it was this number we don't want tax rates and all that in there what was their exposure in that and what hit their taxes. I, yeah, I understand tax rate is what that, that this that is going to be fine for exposure. a lot of a lot of the population is not going to be fine for everybody else. I think people are going to misconstrue that like a brand new levy. What do they think about the school? I mean, people tell me all the time. So when you guys come and ask for more money, that's why I hear all the time. When you come to ask for more money, we're kind of not asking for more money. We're just asking for a continuation of what we had. Yep. That is really the biggest issue. And we have to be very clear about it. I mean, I don't see it here. Yeah, I just, on the other hand, I'll just be the devil's advocate here. If we cloud them with all kinds of numbers for 10 years, is that going to just overwhelm them with what are all these numbers mean? It would, it would, I don't. It would set. I don't know that that's the solution, but yeah, I, I'm that, just. That, that probably set more people out. Well, yeah, I than, just, than just this uh, one number. But yeah. I, I, I'm not totally disagreeing with you, Bruce. I'm not saying this is bad either. But if we're going to use the number, then maybe we need to put the current, you know, capital project levy, or we need to, you know, find a better place for it so that it it states it in there again. The more we can turn around and say what we're currently doing is this, and we want to maintain this, the more that. Is best is driven home, I think, feels better to, to yeah, really to that point. Tell a little story as far as what it was last year, because otherwise, the way it is now, is, you know, I don't want to hide numbers from anybody, but that number just pops out, and, and people are going to assume that 
Well, they want another 383,000 a year. Yeah. Well, but that is what we get every year. But, but that's that's what our that's what our what our but, but to maybe explain not a 10 year chart, but just to explain what we got last year, maybe to just to tell a little story behind it, how we arrived at it. Okay, so the the risk we re, we the risk we run in going into the weeds of putting the percentage and how that changes with your tax value and to the amount of money that the district receives, because that's really the story. Because the story is we have asked for a percentage of the taxable market value. Okay. So when um when you look at the um, truth in taxation, um, when he talked about the additional, um, and I'll just kind of go back, I'm going to just pull it because it, he called it specifically out um, on, um, as one of the variables and one of the changes because um, it is it's 61,243. Now, if property values go down, we will get less than $383,000. We would lose, we would not, we might go backwards by $20,000 if property value can increase for the previous year. But, so do you see how weedy that is to get yeah. into in a survey? And maybe, and maybe it's just a starting point too. I guess I, I, I kind of agree with Bruce in the fact that, <clears throat> And I want this to go through, but you know, we got to start somewhere. But I'm just, I'm just worried. From the, I'm talking from the rural community, you know, the valuations have gone up, and I know that's for a different date for us right. to talk about that. Mm -hmm. But I guess that's why I'm leery of. But I guess we got to start somewhere. How many sample people has it gone to? I got a, I got a group that I run across, and whenever there's something going on, they're over to hassle me, and it's. Let's just call it a coffee group. I'm curious what they think. I, I don't know if that's what a I practice right we now, want to get into. They're going to go right to three. I, mean, I don't know that we want to get no. back into a practice of having our community vet out our survey. You have to, what we are after here is to know what the community thinks with a full understanding of what happens. Right. And the, what triggers me is when we're going to try and explain it to them in groups of 10 and 20 at a whole bunch of meetings, sometimes three, sometimes 30. You're not there. This is going to every so, person in the public. It has to be. That's also why we're hiring this professional group who does this across the state and understands that sentiment in communities across the state. I don't think we're different than two counties over. And I can English give them that feedback. Heading. I can. I hear what you're saying, and I can give them the feedback of, okay, so how else can we communicate the the history um i think i when when you are asked bruce when are you coming back for more money i think the answer is now because we told you we needed to like that this has been a story that's been told many times over and i i but, but and people is, don't remember it's all kind of partials we we've told everybody that's coming and everything People just need an explanation. We talk about transparency. Okay, let's be transparent about what this really is. It's an existing levy, and all you're going to do is is renew it to have it continue. And again, it's about this page. It says it twice in a row, in big bold letters with a question. I you know, I don't I don't see where that's not being transparent. To say we're going to renew this for the same tax rate, and we're going to. Now the question is, would you support us renewing it for the same rate? That's the question. So, so is the is the is the trigger the the, the dollar money. amount in there? Because that's factual. Yeah. It's also transparent because it's factual. The capital project levy provides three hundred eighty-three thousand dollars per year for purchasing, installing, uh, supporting technology, devices, systems, training personnel. This is a levy that will expire next year. The only thing that's picking it up is the last three words. So again, that is an existing levy. Can you put current in there ahead of the 383? This levy currently that's, that's what I'm I just um that we're the same as everybody else. I don't believe that's true. We have seen schools pass levies that I'm not sure we could have passed here. Yeah. But what we have done 
is we've tried to be totally transparent. And you got one shot to get to every single person that could show up at a voting poll. Maybe they take advantage of it, they don't. But if we have stuff that we're gonna try and cover, we're gonna get enough stuff to cover anyway. But to try and get them basic message that this is an existing level of traffic, so we get a little careful. So then why do we hire this professional group to come in and do this for us? You know, well, nobody hires anybody just to do their thing. You have to put some personal touch in it. I mean, our we're going to find our own focus group to direct this company. You know, send it back to them to find out what they say. Oh. Um, they can't be doing them all the same, same for everybody. Um, most of these, we, I have, most of these I have seen way more than just once before we're going to decide to send it. So Bruce, how would you feel about the word currently? Yes. This levy currently provides, does that make it more clear? I think it does. Yes. Then, then that, I don't think it, I don't think we're looking at just the simple stuff that we seeing what's going on is passing over. We got to get it to people of what exactly is going on. I like that word just to modify it a little bit. I mean, that's, yes. you got to put a little lipstick and rouge on it. I'm sorry to say, but it yes. just, Okay. And, and let's not kid ourselves. After this survey, we as a group, we've got our work cut out for ourselves because, yeah, I think I feel it's kind of our responsibility to mm -hmm. answer any questions or, or, or uh, regardless, get, get the right. Regardless of how the survey comes back, we yeah. still have a lot of work ahead of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I kind of feel with Bruce that that is, it's going to get with sticker shock the 300. And, I mean, when, if you've got an annual budget for your family of seventy thousand dollars, three hundred eighty-three thousand dollars, that sounds like an awful lot of money. I mean, I'm used to dealing with it here because we deal with big bucks. But if I was a first-time homeowner with three kids and just looked at that number, it's whoa, would blow the top off my head. But at the same time, when we think about $383 for all of our students, all of our classrooms, all of, we spread it out. It's not a lot so of this money. Is, this is the kind of the quandary with doing a survey around a tax rated item that is not a per pupil funding. That was, that's the quandary about this type of a survey because you're, you're essentially asking to understand what is our level of support to renew where we are. That's really what we're trying to understand. And if there's not the level of support, then what we need to find out is why and how do we communicate that? And is there a different set of priorities? I, I think if we're really clear about this isn't going to, this, we're not asking for more. We're just asking for what we've got. If we're really clear right. about that, I really think this will pass, but we have to make it clear. So let's go over the rest of the survey. But currently is the only thing we're missing, then I think we keep moving forward. I mean, but the thing is we just need to make it look like it's not zero to $383,000. Yes. Right. What is it now? What is it now? So, is it three forty three or three forty three? That's what but it is. Currently, right now, three right now. That is what it is. But it's not three eighty three from zero to three eighty three. It appearance is that it's zero to three eighty three. So, so let me let me bring back this question. Does it seem better to ask for a three point put in the percentage, a consistent three point seven four five whatever it is um, percent? of the taxable market value. Now, now that, that in my mind muddies, it becomes- I think, you're, I think you're right with the number. I just don't know. I mean, I'm looking at this for five minutes, like everybody else was. I've seen these before where I had a chance to look at it and think about it a little bit. So I don't have it right off, but somehow to tell people this isn't zero to 383, a whole bunch of this has been there for 10 years. All we're wanting to do is continue it. Right. Okay. And it appears to me like just listening to you talk, Cheryl. If people look at that and say 383, man, I got a young family. It's not 383. It's whatever that difference is from the previous year. And it's been there for 10 years. Where I, I'm not sure how to do it. And, and I'm not sure it's reasonable for me to have to do it in five minutes either. Well, and we can, I can, I, so the, the, this is why we've hired the company, Bruce. I don't, this, I have asked them, here's what we're trying to communicate. We need to understand, will they support our existing, our existing letter? That's really the bottom line. 
So the questions become, well, what is the current data? It's $383,000. It's your three point whatever tax percent tax. What is the current data? And what that's, that's what you have to per, put out for the community. As we look at like the bond and the operating referendum, we can tell the story about in 2019, the community supported this. In 2022, the community supported this. Now, my wondering is that, are they gonna say, I'm done saying yes. We've said yes and yes, you don't need any more, right? That's a worry I have. And that's already, I think, a sentiment that I think people are worried about currently. So do we put that information in there? I don't know. That was a question. I'm actually not gonna add any more because I can't think fast enough to figure this out yeah. in five minutes. Okay. Uh, I'm just telling you, it doesn't read right to me. I, I like the word current, the current. Either existing or currently current, or something yeah. in there. But currently, is, I think I counted it three times on that one page. Okay. It's already, I, but so we added it a fourth time? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I think just before that, just before that dollar value that we're saying, if we have current or currently, that, yeah. yeah. And I, I can I, I can put it out. I. And I will send it, I'll send this back to the board after yeah, I get another, um, yeah. the, I will ask you to, to look, check your email, please, because they will ask for this to go back so that they can get it to their printers so we can get it out after the first of the year. Is that fair? Okay. I think what we've decided right here is we could add so much more and make it so much worse. <laughs> Because I'm getting more confused. <laughs> and it was simple to start with, but it's getting more confusing to me. But okay. I mean, well, we're, let's, we're, I don't want to confuse people any more than we have. Let's come back into the other areas of the survey. Okay. Because one of the other things, pieces of feedback that I know I heard is that the only time you ask us what how we're how the district is doing is when you need money. So I think it's really important to find out other right. portions of feedback. So this is where the other areas are. Um, some general, like, how is the district doing in relation to communications? Okay. So these are some, this, this is language that's been used in, with many other school districts. So it's kind of vetted as these are topics that um, the communities will, would like to provide feedback on. So communications. Um, and again, they would answer with strongly agree, agree, disagree, strongly disagree, or not sure or no opinion. Okay. And in all of these areas, um, and it's every statement is the district provides me with the opportunity to offer feedback or the district communicates with me effectively. Okay. So you're going to see communications questions about our culture, maintains a safe and secure campus as the support of the community. Again, this is just a, a, the entire community's perspective, okay? Um, leadership, academics and development, support for learning. This gives us an opportunity to hear where are the areas that our community feels like we're doing well and where are the areas that our community feels like we should focus on a little bit more, okay? So this is an a opportunity to give get feedback from our community members, okay? From there, we think about the future ready planning. So when we've talked about strategic planning and knowing what are the areas that we should be focusing on, this is a, a place that we can start gathering what are some of the other areas that our community might feel like we need to focus on, okay? And these are, again, a, a pretty traditional um, list of items that schools are often, often focusing on, um, and it'll give us an opportunity to hear where our community, maybe we get six themes from this or seven themes from this. And then the board has an opportunity when you wanna look at strategic planning in the future, maybe you dig into those items, okay? And then it opens it up in both, it opens it up to say, are there, things that we haven't identified. So it gives a free range opportunity for um, just a response as well. And then what do we want our graduates to know? So we've got everything from leadership, conflict resolution. This really aligns pretty nicely to the culture and climate work that had been done um, to understand, you know, do we, do our kids 
um, I, I look up and I see uh, managing stress and strong mental health, leadership abilities, non-academic skills, resilience, grit, courage, empathy. Some of those also align with our current um, PBIS initiatives. So it'll be interesting to see how does that align with what our community is seeing, okay? Again, opens up at the tail end for place to add additional information, okay? And then this is the same that we've had in every other survey, just the general pulse of the district. How is the district doing delivering high quality education? These are the same four questions that have been on every other survey that have gone forward, okay? Um, and then it's the demographics, so we can find out who completes our survey. Okay. So um, part of the reason I did not put this into the board agenda ahead of time is because I don't know that it's appropriate to send it out into our community before the survey is, is finalized and vetted um, with the board. So I can certainly send this to you to review um, via an email and you can give your feedback. Um, I do have a call scheduled with um, with him later this week, so um, I can, and I'll bring this feedback forward well, there's as well. Nothing in there to secret, by any means. We have, we just want to ask the public what's wrong, and we're trying to be transparent. I don't get the security of a survey. Well, let's get it in the final form before we yep. get it yes. out there. If and we're going to add a word to it, one word may well, make a difference. Commonly, if you have something that's going to the public, you take samples and just see what people think. Do they understand? All of that kind of stuff. Um, it's not like I think that's I'm an of, expert or anybody's a specific expert, and our communities are different. Um, I just all we're talking about is transparency here. But it's amazing you can look at a statement. I've read it a dozen times, and now I'm thinking the other way. It's probably good. So yeah, you can, you can make it's a matter of how you want to read into it. So again, I think this is this is part of what the board hired school perceptions to do was to pull together the information. Um, I will give them this feedback and I'll let them know what the wonderings are. Is it as clear as can be that this is existing and this is our current? Can we add to that and make it more clear? We may already have a solution. Sure. If they're what well, we yeah. think they are. Yep. That's what's happened before. Okay, so um, this that was just informational, so there is not anything, there doesn't require any action on that. Okay. okay. No, we would like Ron to stand. <laughs> um, so every year we uh, we do get notification from the School Board Association when our, our board members um, have completed uh, various levels of training. So I think um, everybody else did. Well, you're just a... A little bit further ahead, and that's okay. So we got you've got done all four. Very good. Congratulations, Ron. Thank you. Um, and then, well, oh, can I shall I keep going? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, real quick, reviewing um, upcoming meetings. We have December nineteenth teacher negotiations, um, and then um, actually, I'm also going to add on there January. Eighth. January 8th, service. we yeah, have a, uh, Miranda, can you add January 8th food service? Um, and then, because um, that one is actually before right. our um, January board meeting, mm -hmm. okay? okay? It's uh, 4 p.m. in here, here for time. Okay, that concludes uh, our regular business. We're gonna go into closed meeting at this time. So we will need a motion to close the meeting for the purpose of conducting the superintendent evaluation. Let me see the motion. At 732. 732. Okay. There's a motion for Cheryl. Second. Second for Bruce. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. So the meeting will now move into closed practice. Okay. All right. Um, you're live. So we need a motion to open.